Hello and welcome to Educators Leadership Academy. We're here to offer educational professionals everywhere a new direction and a different perspective through leadership development. Over the years, we've shaped the academic careers of many who have gone on to become department chairs, deans, vice presidents, and university presidents. Today, we're speaking with noted academic author, Dr. Sia Versheldon, a leading expert on bandwidth recovery. She's vice president of academic and student affairs at Malcolm X College. College in Chicago. She'll be leading the workshop at Educators Leadership Academy on the campus of the University of Central Oklahoma on October 11th of this year. Sia, let's get right to it. Could you tell us what is bandwidth and what is bandwidth recovery? Bandwidth is the idea of how much attentional resources that you have to bring to a learning environment. And some people call them cognitive resources. So it doesn't have to do with how smart people are. It's how much of their attentional resources they can bring into a classroom, for instance. So some things, we just have a limited number, but we have only a limited amount of bandwidth. So uh, tell me some of those things that uh, are included in bandwidth. Being able to learn, to maintain healthy relationships, to work, all of those things are in bandwidth. So it's the part of our brains that we have conscious control over. If we're worried about money or we're worried about other things, then we don't have all of our attentional resources to bring to the learning. So it's very possible that some students in your class have a lot of bandwidth and other come in with some of their bandwidth already being utilized and therefore unavailable for learning? That's exactly right. So economically secure, straight white students come often into the classroom with their bandwidth pretty much intact. But if you are worried about money, if you have put up with racist comments or homophobic comments, or you are in some other group about whom there are negative stereotypes, some of your bandwidth, some of your attentional resources are being taken up by those worries and irritations and insults. If you don't have all your bandwidth, with you just don't have enough to absorb the things you're supposed to be taking in in class. So you don't have a chance to, when you're listening to the professor, part of your mind is off on something else. You're worried about money or worried about your children getting sick or feeding your children decent food or get, or having a safe place to stay. And so compared to the person who has all their bandwidth, you're just not getting the learning. And so then when you try to take an exam or write a paper, you don't do as well. Well, let's talk about this upcoming seminar workshop that you're going to be doing at the University of Central Oklahoma. What are some of the things that you're going to be talking about? I will spend a while making the case and showing the research that things like poverty, racism, homophobia do deplete the cognitive resources of our students. And then I'll spend hopefully more than half the time talking about promising interventions in in classrooms and outside of classrooms to help students recover bandwidth. There are things that we can do to create a learning environment at our schools that help students recover bandwidth. There's growth mindset mindset in which students, the, the point, the main point of growth mindset that I emphasize is the fact that when you make mistakes, that's when you have a chance to learn. And yes. so affirming that it's okay to make mistakes. And in fact, that's the time where you have the opportunity to work your, with your peers and professors to, to grow your brain. And then what about the high hope syllabus? That sounds interesting. A high hope syllabus has high demand, so high expectations and high support. So lots of scaffolding. You have assignments where students write proposals or write and you give feedback, then they revise and you give some more feedback. So you're not just assuming they can do the final product. You're giving them lots of support. Yes. And then identity and safety. Well, identity safety is about, um, there's there could be identity threat environments or identity safe environments. Identity threat environments, for instance, are environments where, uh, let's say you're a student of color and you don't see images of yourself on the walls or and you not very often see somebody, a professor or somebody in a leadership position who shares an identity with you. Identity safe environments are environments where the opposite of that. You see yourself in pictures on the walls, in art, in who's leading the college or university. So you feel like you belong. Belonging is central to much of this. Sia, this sounds like an exciting workshop, but more than that, it's information that every educator in America needs to know more about. Educators Leadership Academy looks forward to our workshop with you this October the 11th. Thank you. I'm excited to be able to come to Oklahoma and give that workshop. Friends, Educators Leadership Academy knows that the roles of education professionals are complex, challenging, and always changing. We understand the importance of providing you with a compass that helps guide you 
you to new concepts and solutions that actually work. Come to the Educators Leadership Academy website and learn more about our many programs that will supercharge your career, and we want you to be sure and enroll in Dr. Sia for Sheldon's Bandwidth Recovery Workshop, October the 11th at the University of Central Oklahoma.